Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, today we will talk about uh, origins of a logo, Agent Tesla. So it's a well-known, uh, one of the well-known remote access Trojan in the world. Also, I can just uh, say it's a one of the top ten uh, malware. So uh, let's uh, just let me uh, say who we are. I am Berk Albayrak. Uh, I have been working as a, a threat research team lead at Malvation. So. Uh, I carry out many different proactive threat intel operations against malware and APT groups. Uh, so in Malvation, we work on uh, the detection engineering side uh, on the sandbox product called uh, ThreatZone. And let me uh, describe, uh, so introduce our colleague. Hello, I'm Utku Çorbacı. Uh, I'm working as security R&D engineer at Malvation. Uh, I've been working on emulation engines, uh, sandbox technologies at Malvation. Thank you. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, the agent Tesla and then uh, how uh, the team re released the second logger, origin logger, and uh, after the team uh, stopped the sales, uh, also there was a law enforcement operation against the team, and then they just changed their whole operations, and uh, we will just release our own obfuscation and uh, packing uh, methods that the team used. Also, afterwards, we will talk about our children unpacker projects, uh, and then we will show you uh, who the Agent Tesla developers are and their real identities. Uh, so, Agent Tesla is a remote access Trojan and a .NET binary uh, that just targeting Windows uh, systems uh, since 2014. And when it was released, firstly, it became very popular because it was free uh, of the charge and very stealing sensitive information from the victim computers like stealing users browsers passwords and uh, FTP files or the sensitive files on the machines and it has some capabilities like downloading uh, additional payloads and uh, key logging and a screenshot capture features uh, so the initial purpose of the agent Tesla uh, as far as it the developers say uh, was to monitor the devices of the employees and uh, carry out the work follow-ups, uh, but a few months after the first variant of the agent Tesla, uh, it's seen that the product has uh, become paid and now uh, it's being uh, sold. So the team developed the agent Tesla, uh, started to make the first sales of agenttesla.wordpress.com in 2014, and actually took the first steps of the very malware as a service structure uh, that they will create in the future. Also, it was a starter point of the team. And as can be seen in the figures, uh, they just published their first sales with the Turkish language, mostly. Uh, the fact that the team put the product on sale, uh, the added, they added the CPM email campaign capabilities into the uh, Access Trojan, and uh, they changed the cybercrime markets in 2014. So just before the first sales post, uh, the team started to share uh, first versions of the product uh, with the users for free on underground markets and platforms uh, under the headings of the free Agent Tesla software and free remote access Trojans. And the team realized that uh, as a service model uh, was catching on and being uh, bought someone. And uh, as of the 2014, uh, the Agent Tesla team updated their domain address and then switched to agenttesla.com. Uh, although it seems that the uh, team is only changing the price and packaging the new product, uh, in fact, it has been evolved in a market. Uh, so that will make it so widespread until today. So uh, the malware as a service actually is a business uh, that mostly cyber, cyber criminals develop their own projects and sell or lease them on the underground markets like similar to legitimate software as a service tools. Uh, so in fact, uh, the team also realized that this as a service structure uh, they had in place was working uh, because uh, where once it mo almost mandatory for each group uh, to develop their own specific malware, now everyone was buying uh, malware, one part of the attack chain. Uh, in fact, uh, there is an important reason for to do this uh, because every day a, mal a new malware detection method uh, is being developing and while new evasion methods uh, need to be developed by malware developers. And the uh, 2018s are almost very important for the agent Tesla's 
history, I think, because they just mentioned too many attacks in the blog post and they just increased the attacks. Also, it became visible. And in these years, uh, also 2019, Agent Tessa says domains were closed completely and their content was removed completely uh, due to the legal problems that uh, the team faced with the uh, uh, police. And uh, this photo shows the latest version of the Agent Tesla uh, builder before it has been completely closed. Uh, and after a couple of days later of these uh, messages, the team has published some information in their Discord servers, uh, services. Like uh, if you want to see a powerful and more nice uh, tool, just choose the origin logger. Uh, and they start to sell this new malware on their Discord servers. So. Uh, but with all these all-known facts, uh, no report about the origin logger variant has been published uh, until the beginning of 2021. And as of 2021, uh, some researchers have has started to be published by researchers that Agent Tesla version 3 has been written. Uh, so actually, origin logger is a variant of Agent Tesla. Uh, and the main reason for this uh, incorrect attributions, uh, because all of the origin logger variants are now written on the source code of the agent Tesla and so-called version three versions now have the ability to the connect uh, over Tor and send, sending some victim informations uh, with, uh, via Telegram. And origin logger also known as the agent Tesla version three, uh, Negastil and Zipak uh, is the same agent Tesla rat originally. Uh, and the same, or original uh, agent as a developers are created this new uh, as a service model in 2018. And uh, the first findings of the logger can be traced to be their change logs on the website uh, on the originpro.me and originpro.nl, uh, which was opened by the same developers also uh, in 2018. And they just released the first version of the origin logger. But now every researcher on the internet has still says it's an agent as a version three, uh, but it's not. So in order to continue the, this new sales, uh, the team continued by adding each new update to the change logs under the new uh, sales domain of the malware. And here they have added uh, new features to the product by increasing the number of applications that they can uh, just intercept more passwords or more tools uh, in the underground forms. So before analyzing and going deeper in the origin logger malware and how it works, uh, it will be more useful to examine their origin logger built uh, files. So they were leaked in 20, uh, 2022 and uh, to we can easily understand the malware capabilities with the looking these uh, figures also. Uh, for example, uh, while the malware is being built, uh, you can just add your own settings and necessary configurations on the uh, settings file and then you can yet you can add your own email and password requires that uh, required for the uh, malware as a service connection it can be added easily in here and also in the settings page you can choose your own exfiltration method like http ftp smtp or like directly uh, telegram c2 panels uh, so you can ex extract the vic victims uh, credentials like in these ways uh, so actually our story of the all these researches started with a phishing email received uh, by one of our company employees. Uh, the email, which was forwarded to threat actors uh, to an employee, uh, contains a link uh, disguised as a fake PDF file. Uh, and also it, it was, uh, contains a Mediofire link by replying to an uh, email that has been uh, previously sent by a, our trusted partner. Uh, so if the victim user clicks on the link, it's redirecting the victim to the uh, download an archived file from Mediafire. Uh, due to the nature of the business email compromise, uh, the user is reflexively exposed to different fraud methods like clicking on the link because it's coming from a trusted partner uh, or downloading a file attachment or sending money to the altered IBAN uh, addresses. So when we look at the campaigns, uh, depending on the malicious names uh, has been changing from the country, like in here, they are just choosing a Turkish names because of the Turkish victims. And uh, we saw that they are targeting Germany, Poland, England uh, and Turkey mostly. 
uh, because it's a business email compromise. They are downloading the whole email uh, users in a, e in a compromised email and sending spams automatically. And uh, due to this, uh, as a service structure of the origin logger, all similar to other uh, remote access Trojans, uh, the types and the methods uh, attacks are dependent to the affiliates uh, methodologies or affiliates intents uh, mostly. But uh, these whole spam campaigns using a particular malware family uh, are usually attributed to malware itself. Uh, so the attacks described here, all of the origin logger attacks, have been identified as being carried out by directly original, uh, origin logger developers with moderate confidence. Uh, when the victim clicks on the archive link uh, in the media file, uh, the device downloads a uh, a Gunzip file and Gunzip compressed file with a file size between 1.1 or 1.6 megabytes. Uh, after all the download of the files extracted from the archive, a bloated executable file is creating with the using zero and null bytes at the end of the original file. So in order to doing that, uh, they are gaining a capability to the bypass antiviruses and uh, online sandboxes with a higher size. Uh, so, as can be seen in the direct figure, uh, the original payload is only about uh, one megabyte in over 700 megabytes. Uh, however, when the zero bytes in the uh, bloated file are debloated, uh, all that remains that uh, origin logger malware that has passed through the Cassandra protector. Hello again. I will continue to talk about the um what Cassandra Protector is, how it works, and how to unpack this protector that is used by um, many malware groups. Uh, I will also talk about the uh, Chiron project we developed to automate this uh, whole unpacking process and how it works. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk about uh, Cassandra Protector. This protector developed exclusively for .NET applications uh, offers a range of features as advertised uh, on, its, on its sales site. Uh, it's recommended by the developers of the malware in all versions of Origin Loggers, Origin Logger, uh, to use Cassandra Protector. The reason behind this is that on uh, October 1st, uh, 2018, uh, when the first sales posts uh, of Cassandra Protector were released, uh, the team developing Origin Logger uh, noticed these posts on an underground forum uh, and wanted to examine the software as it caught their attention. After this review, uh, it was observed uh, that the team developing the malware began recommending this protector everywhere. Uh, as you can see, uh, Cassandra Protector has customizable injection methods, uh, antivirus and anti-emulation evasion tactics, execution delay options, and many more features. After finding out that the application is written in .NET uh, with help of Detected Easy, uh, we decompile the application with the NSPY uh, and look at the entry point and constructor functions, uh, and it look harmless. However, when we look at the initialized component function uh, that the first exec function executed at the entry point of the malware, uh, we see that it loads a module um, into mem memory and runs. In initialized component function, uh, the first module is loaded into memory by starting the uh, assembly load events, uh, and each module uh, loaded after that loads another module and shows a Matryushka type behavior. Each of these functions looks like a complicated expression on the NSPY, uh, but in the picture above we can see that uh, it evokes uh, load function of the assembly class. When we execute this sample in debug mode with the NSPY, uh, running in an isolated environment, uh, we can see that many modules are loaded at runtime. The last module loaded is Tyron, uh, which unpacks the protected application. When you pack an application with Cassandra, uh, all resources are renamed, but uh, except Tyron. So uh, the purposes of the Tyron module uh, are to decrypt the resource in it with a special RC4 key, uh, save it to the app data local path, and uh, persist its execution by starting a scheduled task. Uh, and then in the Tyron, Tyron module uh, in Cassandra, we see some uh, Confuser X protections such as string encryption. Uh, you will see pictures about this on uh, the next slide. And Confuser X is an open source protector for .NET applications. Uh, it's the favorite protection of uh, .NET developers and 
including malware groups. Um, being open source, Confuser X uh, features are available in many protectors, uh, for example, Cassandra protector. And the constant protection and control flow of obfuscation uh, features in Confuser X is also used by Cassandra Protector. Since the module file name Tyrone is obfuscated with Confuser X, uh, it's not fully understood when first opened in the end spy. Uh, we see string encryption and uh, control flow of obfuscation in the fields uh, where the name and RC4 key and of the uh, RC4 key of the resource to be decrypted are taken. Therefore, uh, when we do not debug this file with the NSPY, it becomes very difficult to understand which resource is decrypted um, with which specific RC4 key. Chiron Unpacker was created to automate the unpacking process for all packers uh, working in this way. Chiron Unpacker creates a special application domain and handles the uh, assembly load calls, assembly load events, and this allows us to handle all execute executable.NET modules um, loaded into memory after they are loaded. If you have a file that is protected with uh, working protection like uh, Cassandra Protector, uh, you can unpack it with uh, Chiron. And next week, uh, it will be made uh, publicly uh, available on the Malvation GitHub account. And so, uh, now uh, I will show you how the Chiron is used and how it looks. Uh, first of all, uh, when I decompile the packed version of the malware with the NSPY and follow the sequence of the, of the events uh, from the entry point, I encounter the first assembly load event inside the initialize component function. After seeing this, I run Chiron and look at the saved assemblies at this stage. Uh, Chiron created a special ap application domain and ran the malware sample in that domain and uh, saved each of the loaded in-memory assemblies. When Chiron finishes its work, uh, we see that it dynamically deobfuscates the string encryption process to access the uh, RC4 key and resource name. And when we dump the last file that it saved uh, using these into the NSPY, uh, we can see the configurations uh, we showed in the previous slides of the presentation. Uh, for example, here we see uh, the command and control panel used by the malware sample. Uh, Okay, let's uh, briefly talk about the origin logger uh, infection chain. Uh, let's summarize all of these attacks coming from uh, origin logger. Uh, with the business email compromise attack, an uh, email is sent and there is a link, uh, there is a link uh, in this email that redirects to Mediafire. Uh, with this link, a file with uh, TarGZ extension is downloaded. Uh, TarGZ contains a bloated malicious file of about uh, approximately 800 megabyte in size. Uh, this file is protected by a protector, uh, protected by a protector uh, called Cassandra Protector, uh, that is specially designed to bypass signature-based antiviruses and uh, static uh, engines. Once executed, the malware complicates things by loading multiple modules into memory. It exfiltrates uh, sensitive credentials and data from the infected computer uh, according to its configuration and then sends it to the Telegram C2 panel. Let's summarize. Uh, using the Chiron project, uh, we analyzed all origin logger samples in the wild and extracted their configurations. Uh, now my colleague uh, will give you the true identities of origin loggers developers. Thank you. Yes, also please attention uh, in the following, because in the following stages, we will share some uh, TLP red informations. Uh, please don't take any photos or record. Uh, we can share the TLP red documents uh, with those who want. Uh, so just send an email to us. Uh, as a result of these whole investigations, uh, the threat actors uh, are you still using BEC attacks, but we saw a retirement, an, a retirement announcement in their origin leave uh, Telegram group in 1 July 2024. And uh, they are just noticing something about, uh, they are just saying uh, we are still, we are, uh, it has been about 10 years. And also it's indicating 2020, uh, 2014, and it's the same year as like as the agent Tesla. And they state they, they uh, now ending the project and they have been developing uh, for years. Also, everything shows them uh, they, these whole informations are related with the real identities of the actors. So despite all these OPSEC failures, even though the group claims to have ended its operations and development after 
uh, the last 10 years, its own C2s are still active and continue to collect victims. Uh, although we can say that the life cycle of the malware as a service is over for now, uh, you can already see many points overlaps in the life cycle group, like when they, when they closed their agent Tesla shops, uh, a couple of weeks later, they are just released the second, uh, the third version of the uh, agent Tesla with the name of the origin logger. So I think we should do more proactive intelligence uh, than just catching any uh, crime or reporting IOCs. Uh, I think it's important uh, to find people who is behind of that computers. Uh, it's more important than the finding and releasing some IOCs on the internet. I think this, these uh, researches are more important than the other type of researches. So uh, because every day, uh, a new business account uh, can be hijacking uh, or a malicious software with a different IOC thrown to another user. So we have uh, committed, uh, we, can, we have communicated with the law enforcement about these operations and there is a still active operation in the Turkey. Uh, so thank you for listening. If you have questions, uh, that's the correct time.